G'day scrappers, welcome to part four of this scrap marathon. Uh, and yeah, so another day in the wild, just uh, scrapping along. Um, so what I decided to do today before I start getting onto heavy stuff is just uh, clean up a, a lot of smalls that I've got. And I just noticed that I've got uh, stacks of modems still to go. So, uh, yeah, I decided today I'm going to uh, finish off as many modems as I can. Um, probably at least do a hundred of them. And I've got a whole heap of these little D-Links uh, stacks of them. So I thought I'll, I'll just get rid of these first. But there's uh, really nothing to these for me to depopulate. I'm just, you know, straight as mid-grade boards. Uh, most modems are pretty straightforward. So... Yeah. Uh, I decided to do a these just now because I'm going out to do a pickup uh, a, a little bit later and I thought well I didn't want to get stuck into anything too heavy uh, before I leave so I'm nice and fresh for when I get there but um, yeah and I've got to sit down and I've got to fill out a work permit to go out and about and uh, all kinds of things like that so uh, yeah so the place where I'm doing the pickup from you'll actually remember from last time when I picked up that whole big batch of Cisco stuff well this is the same place and uh, it doesn't look like they've uh, sent me the list of the items that they've got and it doesn't look like there's like big Cisco modules like the real big kind of things it's just small modules and circuit boards so there's a pallet load so it's not huge but um, oh well one pallet is good enough uh, you know never say no to a pallet load of Cisco boards <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see um, what comes out of the pickup so uh, I'm looking forward to going out there and bringing it back so I'll, I'll give you all a, a little look at uh, what I bring back um, and hopefully it's really exciting and uh, and a lot of good value circuit boards so it's all good it's all happening uh, even though it's my first pickup in a couple of weeks and I got one inquiry today but it doesn't look like I'll be getting uh, much more work for at least a couple you know who knows the lockdown is still oh, four weeks so not many businesses are open um, but the good thing about recycling and uh, waste e-waste removal is that it's uh, one of the it's considered as an essential service so how's that I'm an essential service worker <laughs> uh, so good at least I'll be you know I can um, go out to like to do the odd pickup um, and if the pickups are only small 
what I'll probably do is I'll just ask him to hold off for a few weeks. Um, but yeah, if they're uh, at least a, a, a good size, um, then I'll cut, go and pick it up because uh, sometimes people have so much that they need the uh, space. So I, I'll do them jobs, but if they can hold it for a few weeks, I'd rather not go out and just continue uh, processing stuff here. Um, because even though I can now legally go out and do pickups uh, with this permits thing, um, I'd still rather avoid it if I can. Um, just to you know, be one less person out on, on the road. Um, but uh, in between, from the last video till now, uh, yeah, I've uh, I've done quite a lot of smalls again a lot of uh, a lot more cable and uh, it's just it's all it seems like it's never ending the cable that I've got but I was just uh, thinking to myself yesterday um, just imagine when I've got absolutely nothing left to scrap if that ever happens um, where there's a good chance anyway uh, pickups are going to be awesome again you know like I'll go and do a pickup bring it back and scrap it out straight away rather than having stuff sit around for uh, a few weeks before I get around to it because I've got so many other things to do uh, it's going to be really good that as soon as it, stuff comes in stuff's going to go straight out so that's going to be uh, pretty awesome for me uh, I'm not going to know myself and uh, uh, like since I've started um, recycling e-waste so six years or so um, I've never had nothing to scrap you know like completely empty because when I started I was doing a lot of uh, houses a lot of residential pickups and at that time it was picking up a lot of TVs so I used to have mountains of TVs but now and on, on top of doing the residential and uh, slowly doing businesses and schools, I was also street scrapping pretty heavily because in those, uh, you know, five or six years ago, just about every area had street scrapping. And so it was amazing. I used to go out on days and bring back 30 PCs on average and a lot of vintage stuff nowadays competition's tough everyone's picking up PCs and you don't get much anymore hey I hear the garbage truck taking away the recycling that's always good I love bringing in an empty bin. Uh, uh, just have a bit of coffee. So yeah, yeah. As I said, since since the last video, um, it's been really good. You know, I'll. I, I move one, you know, one or two boxes around and underneath I find boxes with 
stuff that should have been processed ages ago might have just been from a pickup that uh, I just you know threw down f until I got through it you know through the other stuff and oh just some of the boxes I've found be sitting around for months you know just cables few modems um, just knick-knack stuff so I'm really happy that I found some of them and yeah every time I move something I find something underneath that I've forgotten all about uh, I just uh, <coughs> when I finish these modems if I've got enough time I just found another barrel and it, it's got uh, Pentium 4 CPUs in there quite a lot of them <laughs> a few hundred but they're mixed between pinless and um, with pins so I want to I need to separate them okay yeah so I'll be doing that as well just before I started this video I scrapped out about 15 modems um, so I'll be uh, all modemed out by the end of today I think won't want to see uh, an another modem for a while Awesome. Oh. Oh, it looks like the last four of these, finally. A lot of plastic there. Yeah, all these different ones. Yeah. Four screws. Yeah. Three screws. Uh, pretty dirty throw it into mid-grade just like that 
good value them ones really nice and heavy I like them <coughs> so yeah uh, And when I do finish off that pickup and I bring it back and sort it out, um, see whether I'm going to be depopulating them or selling them or, or what, then I need to uh, once again get stuck into the PCs. Um, do as many PCs as I can uh, and uh, So, and what I'll be doing, I'll be loading them straight into the, the van to go to the scrapyard as soon as the van's full up. So it should be good. And that'll be a, yeah, a really nice big batch processed and out the door at the scrapyard. All good. It's going to be great. Um, and that'll just about, yeah, the next load to the scrapyard will, will really make a diff show a difference as far as the PCs in my yard. Um, these are really good heavy boards, you know, they're not very big, but they pack a lot of weight because of all this junction here. Really, really really good value you know uh, even though you know you think oh what's this tiny little uh, you know modem what's that gonna be you know what value but I tell ya pretty good to me fun it's a bit lighter because it doesn't have as much of that steel that you saw in the last one. Still good. Good little jack here. Sometimes if I can be bothered. This one. Oh well. So with the round part tape broken off, you see it's exposed the uh, gold pin in the middle and all that. And that needs to be done anyway if you go to uh, process these because you need to... It's also gold plated inside. So, uh, good. Yeah. So, one pallet of Cisco stuff. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. Unfortunately, uh, the pallets in Australia are, are quite large compared to the European pallet. And, um, and so, otherwise, you know, if, I, if the, we were using the smaller European pallets, I could get the forklift to put the pallet just straight into the side of the van. But... They're just not designed for that. And um, even the uh, the Mercedes vans, you know, or most of the vans, you know, even if they've got barn doors, it doesn't make any difference because the, um, the back doesn't fit uh, Australian size pallets. Battery went flat as usual. Yeah, is, is that the... Uh, the wheel arches, you know, on the inside, so um, they take up quite a bit of room. So you can fit the pallet through the door, but you can't fit the pallet in between the wheel arches. Uh, Australian sized pallets would sit sort of wobbly on top. Just doesn't work. And so, and also, when you uh, load with forklift, 
that's one thing loading, but then you've got to unload it. And I don't have a forklift here, obviously. And um, I was looking at portable lifters, but for, for the price that they cost, I can almost buy a second hand forklift. But yeah, so it's just out of the question. Um, so there's no point in getting a van with barn doors. Uh, when I first decided to start looking for a van, I thought, oh yeah, definitely it's got to have barn doors or I'm not going to buy it. But then, yeah, I, I realized that all the European vans are set up size-wise for uh, European pallets. Crazy. You'd think they'd set up for, you know, for the biggest pallets you can buy, you can get internationally. And then, because pallets don't just circle around Europe, they also come from uh, um, other countries. Uh, I've got to pop these. Uh, I've got to pop these with a hammer just to sp sp uh, split them. Sometimes you get modems that you need to, uh, yeah, just uh, just crack them open with the hammer. Yeah, so no barn doors for me. I thought it would have been really cool, like for street scrapping, you know, um, instead of sliding open the side door all the time, you know, like if I'm around the back area, I can just, you know, open up the, one of the doors and, you know, just throw something in quickly. Um, it would have been really handy for that. But, uh, well, but really, I'm probably not even, if I do get a, another van, I'm not going to use it uh, for street scrapping. I'm just going to, because I'm going to keep both fans. So in this case, it's still a mid-grade board, but it's got a removable IC. I'll just take that, little bonus. Still a mid-grade board. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to keep both fans and use this old one just for all the dirty work. The, you know, the either street scrapping or um, just going to the scrapyard. So I can fill it up with scrap steel and and just have it sit there. And um, still have something to drive around that's clean. And when I go and do uh, professional pickups, good pickups, you know, it just looks more professional. So I'll just leave this whole thing on. Um, yep. Heat sinks and all. Great value, this one. Really heavy. These are Telstra modems. Quite modern ones. Yeah, so still got uh, a little while to, to go before I go and do this pickup. Um, hopefully, when I get there and they, they say, oh yeah, there's the pallet. And then uh, whilst I'm loading that up into the van, they say, oh, here's another pallet. Actually, we've got two. Yeah, you can have this one as well. Um, I don't think so, but... Uh, the last time I picked up from there, that's what happened. There were like meant to be th three pallets, and it ended up being four and a half pallets. And I had to go go back the next day to pick up the rest. That was uh, excellent.
Yeah, so. It's all good. I don't know what happened there. They just wouldn't release. So as you can see the uh, Scrapping out modems is a, is a very laid-back, easy job. Uh, no real heavy lifting or anything like that. It's, and it's just a, a, a great job to do when you, uh, you know, you don't want to go out and, you know, do heavy stuff and um, just in between work, really. So I'm just using uh, this time that I've got while I'm waiting to do the pickup just to do this and then it's another thing out the way eventually and um, it really doesn't matter what I'm processing because it's all got to be done so okay so yep again a mid-grade board but in this case because it's got these gold jacks nice just sitting there like that Might as well pinch these, right? I've mentioned before, uh, a lot of these jacks, especially in modems, they don't really have much gold, to be honest. You know, it's debatable whether they're worth taking off or at all. Um, it's mostly on the uh, really high grade telecom Wi-Fi server type boards um, and Cisco stuff where you'll see the, the gold plating is actually, um, it's very, you know, nice orangey this is see how it's really quite shiny so it, it's quite low gold recovery um, but hey it's still gold uh, what is this pioneer no well, it's not a modem it's a uh, It's almost, it's got like Windows, um, GE3 series, Pioneer, what is it, Dream Vision. Oh, I, I think it's uh, a DVD. Oh, I can see the DVD. Oh, is it? No. Stand by. It might be like a... like a uh, DVR recorder of some kind and it does have an eject button no this this lid comes off oh it looks like a little motherboard it's got a no that that's strange Oh well, whatever it is, it was uh, in amongst the modems, so it's it's going to go as a modem today. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference. We'll just scrap it out. Have a look at what this board looks like. 
I've never gotten one of these before. Um, tiny screws. Yeah. All right. Um, wow. Yeah, definitely it's like a little motherboard. It's like a little PC. I think I could see RAM in here. Ah, a little hard drive. How cute is that? Yeah, it's like a PC. Two RAM sticks. What is it? Um... Model number GE3. Um, yeah, and it's, it's got the Windows sticker, so it's it's a PC kind of thing. That's really strange. Never seen one of these before. I mean, I, I probably do them in, you know, I do get little PCs kind of thing, like thin clients. Um, but this isn't a thin client because it wouldn't have a hard drive otherwise it wouldn't need one really strange huh. oh well something a little bit different than modems I've got this little A little uh, back plane, one tantalum capacitor. <laughs> there we go. I'll just have a quick look. Um, it's a uh, 160 gigabytes. Interesting. Two RAMs. All right. Well. And obviously, it's got a little fan, so the CPU must be there. Nothing there. That's just low grade. Because there's no ICs or anything, it's just jacks, ports. So low grade. All right. Um, uh, now, just got to get these risers out. Strange place to put a riser. Rough as, but <laughs> there we go. Wow, that was rough. So this should be a good reminder. Um, if you need your PC fixed up, don't send it to me <laughs> because it's not gonna come back anything like it came to me. <laughs> I'll just get this heat sink off. Looks like could be what's holding the motherboard down. 
<laughs> you say, oh, can you fix up my PC? Yeah, no worries, mate. <laughs> Leave it with me, give me 20 minutes. <laughs> and uh, it'll, uh, it'll be fixed. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a. Uh, it's actually a. Um, a nice copper. Heatsink there. And there's our motherboard. Can go as uh, like a. Um, a laptop motherboard. Really. There's a bit of copper. In this case, I mean, obviously, it's just plastic. But this copper plate. It's just a thin sheet of copper. So before I do anything, I see if I can there we go, peel it off. Try and get as much as I can. There we go. No, it's actually uh, thicker, thicker than I thought. I thought it was more, you know, like tape. But this is, uh, you can hear that. It's, it's decent foil. So, I mean, it doesn't weigh much. It's not much, but hey, just throw it into your copper. All right. And before I get to the motherboard, uh, I'll just undo this uh, fan and shield. And I think we're going to get some, just a nice little bit of copper in here as well. Little uh, heat sink. So, packs a punch. Wouldn't mind picking up a hundred of them. Uh, copper heat sink, two RAM sticks, green fiber CPU, a little hard drive. Now there's our nice heat sink. There we go. More candy copper. Quite heavy little bugger for the size. Um, this is just like a aluminium foil, you know, that they put there you can clean that up if you want to keep it nice there we go awesome well that was a little bonus and two ram sticks well two little ram sticks means it's equivalent to just one normal ram stick scrap wise anyway and uh, what are they? Uh, one one gig, uh, yeah, one gigabyte. So dims, yep, one gigabyte. Nice. And the motherboard, as I said, um, <clears throat> it's very much like a a uh, a laptop motherboard, so we can put them in there, get better value than. Uh, PC motherboard first. Just want to get our little CPU. There we go. Green fiber CPU. Beautiful. Because it doesn't have the heat sink, it's only light. We call this green fiber CPU. Those beautiful pins. Got a little battery, take off the battery. And there we go. And just to make it kind of look a little bit more respectable. Um, I'll take off this junky steel. And there we have it. Can leave this one on. It's not really going to harm. Technically, probably should take this off as well. 
I'll do that because our laptop motherboards have gone up um, a little bit more than server boards now so yeah I will do a uh, update video on uh, board buying and uh, one of the things I did want to talk about was la uh, laptop motherboards it's really important to get those flat um, fans and heatsink sort of combinations off um, this heatsink's fine on laptop boards beautiful that was that wow I remember these these are um, uh, conferencing systems so they put these in the uh, middle of the table in the boardrooms in the conference room and they can connect up a whole heap of people wirelessly from other offices and that's the speaker um, when I the first time I picked uh, this polycom that's it's a good brand first time I had a, a pickup of that it was quite a while ago but it was a whole heap of this sort of stuff and it was all brand new and these brand new sold for like two and a half thousand dollars so I was selling these on eBay when I was selling on eBay I don't sell anymore on eBay so don't bother asking um, but when I, I used to sell these for like 700 bucks each brand new in box they come with a whole heap of cables and all that sort of stuff um, yeah but uh it wasn't just these it was a whole series of things it was uh, amazing so i did this one pickup i can't remember where i got it from but there was uh i made quite a lot of money from just one pickup um, but nowadays they still i still get them every now and then so it's just a speaker in there and you know they're nothing spectacular like that's just a touch board it's nothing no value because there's nothing on there for recovery this one can go as oh, I was distracted again <laughs> always getting distractions phones calling or someone wants something hard to uh, get your job done <laughs> oh well. So, what I need to do now is uh, start getting ready for this pickup because I've got to fill out my work permit and stuff like that. So, uh, interesting shape board not a great deal on it. it does have a gold band crystal oscillator I can pinch more plastic well that's another thing done so I think I'm just going to tidy up and uh, yeah get ready for the pickup and I'll come back to you when I'm back and we'll have a look at what we actually got. He's hoping that we uh, we score something really good. That the boards are, uh, you know, real good Cisco boards. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you uh, in a minute. Okay, well. Uh, <laughs> false alarm with that uh, Cisco board pickup um, he's sent me an email uh, 
just before I was about to leave and he uh, he asked me um, he, he, he sent me a picture of a pallet of stuff and he said did you pick this up the last time you came because that's what the warehouse guy says and I said oh maybe you know I said there was a, a, an extra pallet um, when I went and done that pickup compared to what he told me there was going to be so it turned out like this guy is he's in another state and um, he runs obviously the business from uh, it's a larger business and um, so yeah it turns out I didn't have to go and do that pickup anyway because I've already done it <laughs> oh well I was looking forward to more Cisco's but uh, I've got heaps in the garage <laughs> So here I've got a NetServer LC3, a bit of an old school HP, um, Pentium 3. So I think this is the last server that I can see anyway, which will be pretty awesome. Oh yeah, it's got old HP uh, 9.1 gigabyte. Ultra SCI drive, how's that? Gosh, got to take it out of this casing to sell it as a scrap hard drive, but that's pretty vintage. There's a couple of... This one's a HP Cheetah. Uh, don't know what size... Oh, yeah, it's... Again, it's, uh, it's 9 gigabyte. How small is that? So, so back to the drawing board just to uh, continue on with scrapping. Um, yeah, I'm not really complaining. I, I, I've actually felt pretty good, a bit relieved uh, when I found out I didn't have to go and do that pickup. Just uh, even though uh, I got a permit system written out. Um, I just didn't want to be out there really and this virus is doesn't seem to be getting any better yeah it's just getting worse and worse by the sounds of it um, which is really strange you know because uh, when we had the, the first wave of this virus why weren't there so many people um, you know I know that they're uh, testing a lot more people uh, than they did in the first stage but even when they weren't okay they weren't testing as many people so but a lot more people are seem to be dying from the virus so why weren't there more people dying when there wasn't any tests and um, people weren't uh, you know being cautious and stuff I, I i just don't get it you know it was even uh, a, small alarm bells when so-called experts were saying even during stage one of the virus oh stage two it's going to be a lot worse you know so we've got to watch out for that well, how did they know it's going to be a lot worse? Why? Why? What made it so worse? People are no longer travelling. Um, you know, I just don't understand. But what do you do? So this big old server is a doozy. <laughs> um, so we've got the motherboard down there, and a pretty awesome board up the back here it's just going to be whether I work out how to get this out well probably the lucky thing here I don't I can't find the right size torque screw for these so I'll see if I can do it there Luckily, these have got a slot for flat screwdriver as well. Okay. That one's 
that and this this one here I think yeah so <laughs> it's a really weird times and how oh, and like New Zealand out of all places you know remember a few subscribers were talking about oh they got on top of it pretty quick and and all that well a uh, couple days ago they announced that there was uh, three or four new cases for the first time in a long time uh, one family they put themselves into a just a three-day temporary lockdown and I was thinking oh yeah well we'll see see how that goes um, and you know and now today there's something like 12 or 15 pe uh, cases and so they're going to go into lockdown again I mean it's just and they don't even can't even work out how uh, someone said that apparently it could be from uh, um, goods being transported like imported and uh, the virus stuck on the packaging oh you know it only you know that only the virus only holds on surfaces for a few days or something like so I'm not sure about that and if that's the case then then we're all stuffed because you know we're not going to stop packaging going through but how's this so this is uh, obviously the the main logic board by the looks and it's got a i960 in it so how's that CPU I've got quite a lot of these in my collection got a little silver uh, tin RAM slot quite awesome nice to get a uh, I wasn't expecting a ceramic CPU and yep this is uh, one of the good ones the big gold cap beautiful gold recovery hey, hey. worth a lot more today than it was uh, six months ago awesome Good board. Wow. Uh, there's another slot card here. So yeah, this is uh, I, I can't ever remember doing a server like this, uh, not in the last few years anyway. So They certainly made them a lot harder. They put them together a lot more complicated those days than they do these days. Nowadays it's all just hot swap. Just a regular card. And it looks like the... Okay, so it's Pentium 3. So that CPU in this card, um, yeah, would be running something else because... Uh, the main RAM is down here, there's four RAM sticks and there's two Pentium 3 slot CPUs which is a beautiful bonus awesome in which I have no idea how to get out So we do it the the e waste bend style. Once it's out, it will never go back in. <laughs> ah. There you go. Okay. Now there we go. Pentium three slot CPU. Beautiful. Have a look hopefully there's a there's a good chip on there hopefully there we go two pentium threes awesome all right Big, big rams, giant. 
They're nice. Good value there. Very dusty. This uh, machine, oh, they would have gotten every moment of its life out of it, by the looks of it. I feel as though I'm due for another holiday. Probably when this marathon session is over um, and I've got rid of most of the PCs. And well, I obviously I've got to wait for the, if this pandemic is ever going to be over. Yeah, I'd like to just get away for a couple of weeks you know, out to, to the country, get some greenery, and support, support uh, country area, because uh, they're struggling probably even more than us, because it's not just a pandemic, but there are many areas before the pandemic um, at the start of this year when we had that massive bushfire, wildfire, you know, and that was devastating. And a lot of businesses haven't even recovered from that. And then they get this extra, um, you know, double whammy. This one's a little bit awkward, a um, bit awkward to do on video because just have no idea but as soon as I finish this I'm going to rip through as many PCs as I can for the rest of the day and I'm just going to continue tomorrow and as I was saying before I want to fill up the van with uh, more scrap, get rid of that batch, and we should all, it should start looking really good from there. Okay. Yeah, always the case, one screw. this well it's, it's undone the back plane board but how to get to it might be at the front I'm gonna start making a move on this motherboard This is uh, pretty awkward. Uh, certainly the dustiest server I've done in a long time. Look at that. Just from one, and we haven't even finished it yet. And sometimes this old dust 
pack can get really itchy and it, you know it's just got something in it so uh, sometimes you just got to go and wash your hands which I'll probably just do now just to start to get this stuff off just get this part off okay now that might help um. ah, this one should do us crazy but we I, I I'm gonna make a promise to myself that once I've gotten rid of all this these excess PCs and stuff and get back into the workshop um, yeah I'm gonna make sure that I'm back on top of all my tools because I can't find most of it it's it's a bit of a pain when I'm trying to scrap stuff out as quick as I can normally and you know I'm held up because I can't find the right tool so I've got to do it in a slower way you know or rough or um, so yeah this uh, pandemic is really is uh, kind of a blessing in disguise for me work wise anyway yeah. okay <laughs> all that just to try and get this back plane board out looks like so I want to at least finish this part I'm down here okay yeah, still can't get over my torque screw, I just don't know where it went to. Now, how is this going to come out? I see. Okay. It's got little plastic. Should do it. Gosh. God, look at all this dust. Um, uh. There we go. Clean steel. And finally got our backplane board. It's a pretty high grade um, backplane board actually. Uh, really great pins there. A lot of tantalum capacitors, real real chunky ones. Um, yeah. So good quality board there. I'll just clean up, throw away some of this rubbish. be back okay so got everything that I want except for the motherboards <laughs> that's got to lift up but first this has got to slide out and how that's going to do Because the board's meant to slide out of this plastic. Oh yeah, that's right. 
There's something still here. It looks like I've got to get this part out. There we go. Oh. See? It all works out. There we go. And look at that board. Now that's that's a server grade board and a half. Look at all these gold fingers and they're good deep gold fingers. Beautiful. Um, I've already taken out the RAM out of it. The two Pentium 3 CPUs. Just got to get the battery out. Um, I'll leave these things in there even though they've got gold fingers still get more value for them um, oh, these ones don't even have gold fingers they're just pins so makes me feel a little bit better adds a uh, good weight because there's really no dead weight on this this is uh, spectacular you know so um, this connector not used are you telling me yes well an extra set of gold fingers probably the best ones just a bit of sticky on it I'll get that off but yeah these are really nice tall fingers so look at that virtually the whole length of this board is gold fingers doesn't need to be on there get the extra value and it's still a server board dual socket for the CPUs um, you know doesn't have a whole heap of chips on there but it does have some nice BGA's there yep beautiful now the back plane board oh let me just uh, it's so dusty let me just clean this crap off Wow, what a big difference running it under a bit of uh, water is. Uh, it just makes it so much nicer to handle and uh, less dust around. Okay, so look, these pins here are spectacular. I can't resist them. I'll, I'm going to break these pins out because they're just too good. These are probably one of the highest quality gold pins that we can find these days even though this is a vintage thing so you can see them uh, if you can um, yeah they're, they're just awesome gold pins so these two ones I'll take off and the rest I'll leave it's uh, it's kind of like a server backplane board it's got Intel uh, flat pack there another good one there lots of little chunky flat packs here um, yeah it's, it's still a good board and it's definitely a server grade board even if I take these two gold pins like even these ones here are act actually very nice as well don't know if they'll come off very easy the rest this stuff I don't bother with and this finally comes out just a little crap board but take it out so I can send this to plastic recycling and well there is a DVD player in here um, it's a good old school board so I might as well get these out uh, obviously without my torques again Yeah, so I'm not sure uh, as far as this pandemic, um, what's happening like in America. Uh, I know they've, you know, some places have been hit pretty hard, but I'm not sure whether they're in a stage one of the pandemic or are they, are you all in a stage two? Um, the reason why I ask is uh, it's a worrying situation there as it is, but, you know, if uh, 
if America hasn't gone through stage two yet, I just hate to see what's going to come from it, you know? So, hopefully, you know, America has invested a lot in, you know, trying to get some kind of vaccine, so maybe that'll save the day. All right. Well, the old school floppy, the diagnostics floppy. So, uh, I've got to get this, because it's very heavy steel, I want to turn this into a clean pressing to get the most value. Just not sure how to do this. There we go. That's really old plastic there. But uh, um, PC ABS. Okay, so it's not straight ABS. That's what makes this stuff hard to recycle because they can't just put it into ABS. It contaminates everything else. PC ABS. S still a good product, but that's why e-waste plastic is... Uh, it's not worth much at all. All right, let me get rid of this mess and uh, yeah, we'll clean up the DVD and see how we go. Right, so all I want from this floppy is just these spectacular gold fingers in there. That's dirty. Dirty pressing. And this really heavy CD-ROM um, I'm gonna just leave I want to clean it up first before I start handling it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the board out of this uh, Hang on Okay, that's a lot better I'm gonna have to uh, See if I can get the vac from the garage and vacuum this uh, this rug on the table is uh, way too much dust for my liking you know it goes blows into the air and then can go through the windows um, through the opening of the doors and into the house I just you know, this is not the type of dust that you want hanging around too long I don't know what's in it. Okay. That was one heavy bracket just for. Uh... Okay. Yeah, I get to use my PH1. Uh, comes in so handy now. Don't know what I did without it. Well, I do know what I did. I did it all by hand. <laughs> but still, I don't mind. Uh, doing a little bit by hand. Okay, so not the most spectacular board. Uh, good gold pins on this one though. More dust. And a bit of low grade. A little bit of mid. And since the motor is exposed, if they're not too sealed up, pop out the motor as well, get a little bit of value. Uh, that little rod there, normally brass, but when they're silvery, normally they're not. Because it's a old school DVD player, silvery, but it, it is still brass. Uh, modern DVDs with silvery, it's usually always steel. So, just don't need much, just I just snip off that, goes into brass. And there we go, that's done. Okay. 
So we ended up getting two hard drives, nine gigabytes or so, um, four big chunky RAM sticks, which I've cleaned up, a really nice i90, big gold cap, really good, CD board, the backplane board with the really good gold pins, the spectacular motherboard with the whole length of it, gold, good quality, high quality gold fingers, can't pass them, and then the rest will just go as a server board once I take off the battery and so on. And even got this uh, really nice card, which the uh, i90 came on. So awesome, spectacular card. Uh, uh, this would just go as a like a server board. Uh, this one here, just a, uh, a another backplane board for the hard drives, but spectacular gold fingers there. So I'll have to work out what to do with that one. And then we got. The two Pentium 3 CPUs, slot CPUs, uh, very nice, and some cable. So that was pretty good. Awesome scrap. Oh, I also got the uh, this giant power supply unit. Uh, good. Get a bit of value from that as well. So there you go, guys. Well, that was very dusty, very dirty, uh, terrible little scrap. Um, but awesome to get rid of it. And now I'm gonna have a bit of a break and now I'm gonna start getting onto those PCs in the garage. I just wanna get rid of a couple of rows and start loading them into the van, sending them off to scrap. So I'm gonna go uh, full bore for the next few hours. So stay tuned. Okay, so these are the elusive <laughs> PCs, HPs from that 103 PC pickup I did recently. Um, they're uh, going, um, as I was uh, loading them into the garage, I noticed that uh, there's three different types. There's the i3, then there's also some i5s and some Core 2 Duos. So um, I'll just check on the i3 to see but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a, a non-sellable CPU um, it's got to be above 3 generation 3 uh, at least to have some kind of uh, value as a, as a CPU but uh, that's alright it doesn't really matter um, but the i5s, they should be okay. Still they're preferably uh, above third generation at least. So I'm just going to rip through as many of these as I can. Um, they've got 500 gig hard drives, so nothing there, but good as scrap hard drives. Um, and I do, do these, these are very common, even you know, from some businesses as well as schools. Um, so I do these very basically, a little bit roughly. Um, I don't go for the wire that's tucked right in, and these are going to go as uh, dirty, dirty pressing steel. So all these plugs and stuff, they need to be cut, um, taken off obviously, and I'll keep them because of the, the gold plating. So for all my cables, I'm just going to fill up the that tub there so I can just, because it slows me down and I just want to get as many done as possible. And because these have got the, kind of like the torque screws, um, I can't find my uh, extension and it's hard to get into a couple of them anyway so I just do these by hand and I just rip through them and throw them straight into the van so I'm just going to do a few now and um, start loading up the van with uh, all the dirty steel that I've got in the driveway because I uh, 
it's probably it's been raining anyway they're, they're quite wet but um, just want to get them in the van and out of the rain and yeah I'll be filling up the van as much as I can to uh, head off to the scrapyard in a couple of days it's always a good relief coming back from the scrap yard because um, you know as you've seen I can fit quite a lot of stuff in the van so these also need to be cleaned up and I'll I will do these because I don't want a whole bunch bunch of these hanging around so but unfortunately these heat sinks are very lightweight there's really not much to them it's only all aluminium but because it's got the copper pipe running through copper aluminium radiator but very very lightweight um, so the RAM on this they're two gigabyte sticks so too small for PCs here anyway and the i3 CPU I'll just have a little look yeah it's generation 3 so they're not they're not very good they should be four uh, but I'm gonna keep these aside and just in case my buyer wants to buy them because I'll have a few um, even if I get a, a you know five bucks each for them they're it's much better than the scrap value anyway so and yeah the motherboards you know pretty standard uh, not a whole great you know as you can see there's really not much gold recovery and so I've updated my price list on buying boards and stuff motherboards are the only thing that haven't gone up and it's because of this reason these I series metal sockets very small BGA there another just a little flat pack there's really not uh, as much as there used to be and that's it so I'll rip right through these the only thing I don't so this is just going to go as dirty pressing steel but this part the top part I'll put into clean pressing steel obviously but I just don't want to take off all this and, and the front cover I'm happy to just get rid of it as it is so I'll get another one and see if I can find an i5 and the core 2 So this is the, uh, it's the same, pretty much the same PC. It's the Core 2 Duo version. Um, so very much identical, except it's just the CPU that's uh, slightly different. So these are good to scrap um, doing a lot of them because they don't have, uh, well, they've got the motherboard screw down, but at least the power supply is not screwed in, so you can just pop that out. Same as the hard drive, pop that out. Should also be, uh, um, yeah, well, 250 gig as opposed to the 500 gig. So maybe the uh, i5 version might have a one terabyte hard drive. We'll just see. But yeah, the good thing about these ones, as opposed to uh, ones that I pick up from schools, is that these are really clean because they've been in a, you know, an office environment, so that it hasn't picked up a lot of dust, just one little clump of dust. Whereas from schools, sometimes uh, I don't enjoy scrapping these simply because they're just so many. Uh, so much dust to them like that server that was it was a uh, sort of a, a win loss sort of situation that it was the server had awesome gold recovery stuff you have to admit you know uh, even the hard drives um, I'll show you the hard drives here so these were the two hard drives that we pulled out of that HP 
server and you can see the circuit boards underneath full full boards this is what hard drive boards used to be all about you know awesome so um certainly uh, gonna get them a lot better for gold recovery than uh scrap value So, yeah, apart from the CPU and the hard drives, is, is, you know, well, it's completely identical scrap. Although this one, luckily enough, it's actually got two RAM sticks. They're both two gigabytes. So, scrap wise, two's better than one. Because these are so clean, um, and I've got so many to do, I can actually sit down and scrap these out. Normally I don't like to sit down and scrap out PCs because uh, your, your face is just too close to the dust. Whereas because these are clean, uh, not much dust is coming up. I'm happy to scrap these um, sitting down. It's just a little bit more comfortable because uh, this bench is table it's just a little bit too low for me i'd love it to be oh, at least six inches higher because i'm kind of half crouching down and just get a saw back you know I prefer to do these in the workshop on the workbench because it's it's a much higher bench and yeah I just rip through them so that's a core 2 duo older style square not even worth even looking at because all my buyers buy really are i5s and i7s but they do take the odd i3 all right so that's the uh, core 2 duo version and just one more i5 okay so same deal again hp version uh sorry the i5 version identical pc deja vu <laughs> so just hoping that these are uh, above generation three to get some better value selling them as CPUs. Uh, but being i5, they're all got some value still. So these ones, ah, oh, only a 250 gigabyte. So the i3 version had a bigger hard drive but there's three C, um, ram sticks in this so that's bonus obviously I had a little upgrade so uh, uh, well, oh yeah so this is a four gigabyte stick and these are the two two gigabyte sticks so they've obviously upgraded with an extra four gig so the four gig sticks I can sell and the low profile ones are quite popular so so it's it is getting a little bit extra value out of it. Um, people say, oh, you know, why don't you resell them? Well, look, I could sell this PC as well to my buyers. Um, they buy pretty much all the i5s. Uh, but in a lot of cases, for what they buy them for, I actually get the same money for the CPU. And in this case, because I've got the RAM, um, I get, you know, I can actually get more then uh, <laughs> then they pay for the whole thing you know and so I might as well get to scrap it out and get some extra value in steel in the motherboard um, th these copper aluminium radiators 
the hard drive. It doesn't really make sense to me, but uh, you know, because they they factor in price uh, like labour. They have to get their staff to you know test them out, go through it, all that, and then they've still got to sell them as complete PCs. Whereas the actual uh, CPU on its own, they get to uh, upgrade a, a, a better version of PC, a more popular version maybe. Yeah. yeah, so there's really not much difference and not worth dragging around and then realizing oh, they're not going to pay that much so I'll bring them all back and you know, just scrap them out get the cps use out i mean obviously i'll get more money if i you know put the cpus and ram on ebay but i just don't have the time it's just not what i want to do at the moment try and sell on ebay um it used to give me a real headache <laughs> but i certainly understand for those guys that only get a few pcs or you know, a few good items that are sellable. I, I perfectly understand why you prefer to, you know, sell on eBay because um, you got to make the most of what you get. But there's just not enough time in a day for me to make the most of what I get. All right. So the only thing I didn't do is check for the. Variation, what is it? It's uh, yeah, generation three again. So, um, it's sellable, but not as good as uh, if it was generation four or five, even and anything above. But okay, well, that's three out of 103. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna sit down and do a whole bunch more and I'll come back to you when I'm down a little bit <laughs> okay well here's my little uh, stack of uh, these uh, 103 PCs in the garage anyway and as you can see I got rid of uh, two pretty big stacks here so um, I'm kind of halfway there I actually I did uh, 50 PCs just now so I'm totally exhausted now. I've, I've kind of had enough of these PCs, you know, doing 50 straight. So I'm going to have a bit of a break and start doing some other PCs. Um, but just out of interest sake, if anyone's interested, um, out of the 50 PCs, there were only seven i5s. So at least, you know, pretty good. Uh, a lot of i3s, probably, uh, you know, 40 of them. And then there was... Uh, bunch of uh, two gig of RAM which is basically just scrap RAM and then surprisingly there's so far there's 46 uh, four gig RAM sticks and the low profile compared to you know these ones so 46 four gig RAMs and low profile are pretty uh, popular uh, some of them had a lot of them had just one but some of them actually had two four gigabyte RAM sticks in there um, so yeah, so I'm really happy with the RAM, really happy with the uh, i5s. Hopefully I get more in the next batch of 50. Uh, and that's just all the cable from there. There's, uh, I, I noticed that the, um, some of the PCs I thought were really clean, but some were really dusty and I was sitting down um, just, just here scrapping out. So uh, I, I thought I'd wear a mask because I was doing so many in one go. And I had a subscriber make me a, a mask um, for the pandemic. So a personalized Airways Ben mask, how's that? I said to him, hey, uh, cause they made them. And I said to her, well, I might start up a, a little merchandise thing with Airways Ben masks. <laughs> but she said, no, I don't need the work. She's uh, flat out making masks. So anyway, 50 gone, they're the motherboards from these 50 PCs, obviously all identical, i-series sockets, um, yeah, so another 50 in the tub, a lot of these, these are all, what you can see are all the power supplies 
for that particular PC, the L-shaped ones. Um, they're only small, but still, they're okay. And the only thing I've kept is the 50 uh, covers from the PCs. That goes as clean steel. They're surprise, surprisingly heavy for what uh, for the size. So there's me 50 PCs all scrapped out. And uh, yeah, so obviously with these ones, I don't bother with the DVDs uh, because they're only the, the regular ones. The boards are so tiny. Um, I just wanted to get through them. Happy to get scrap steel price for them. Uh, so yeah, so dirty steel, but 50 PCs so far. How's that? Um, nice, nice uniform batch of scrap steel anyway. So, so that's, that's that, and uh, now I'm just going to continue scrapping some more PCs, but I've got a, all this stuff is all dirty pressing steel, so I'm going to, um, for the rest of the day, I'm just going to load these into the van, and uh, have a break from scrapping those PCs anyway, and then I'll start probably just doing some of these really tiny, small form factors, and uh, whatnot, but yeah, I think I'm done for for now, and I can actually put this barrel in, and for the first time in a long time, I could probably close this uh, door. <laughs> that would be funny. So there you go, guys. All right, well, I'll keep at it, and uh, everything's sort of getting down. Uh, really looking good. Even this pile is slowly getting down. I might even work on this, and just to finish it off. Uh, yeah, so, uh, all right, stay tuned, and uh, we'll just chill out and scrap out some PCs or a uh, few little oddball bits, might even do a PlayStation. Okay, so I've got this uh, PlayStation 2 that uh, I picked up, I think, uh, through street scrapping, and they really smashed this one up. They certainly didn't want anyone uh, to to use it which you know sure they're throwing it in the bin but uh, unless someone just uh, cracked it and said oh they're gonna just uh, they just decide to smash it up but uh, otherwise <laughs> not sure why some uh, some people just don't want to give stuff away even if they're throwing it in the rubbish bin um, they want to make sure that no one actually gets to it crazy it's very rare though most people actually like um, scrappers going around picking up stuff because uh, uh, they can't do anything with it they're happy for someone else to make use of their stuff. Wow. They certainly uh, gave the um, DVD a hard time. Uh, I don't know. I thought I might be a little bit too zoomed in, but we'll see how it comes out. So yeah, I thought I'd start off on uh, just this since it was just lying around. Well, they've certainly made it easy for me to scrap out. <laughs> so yeah. Um, just wanted a little bit of a break from all the PCs and even though it's it's only a little break from PCs because that's just what I've got to keep doing um, there we go the power board or snapped in half so they really put some effort into smashing it up or someone just uh, didn't do well in their game 
and uh, just started smashing the guts out of it. Uh, I doubt it. Being a, an older PlayStation, um, I just didn't want anyone else to to have it to uh, like get some value out of it like you reuse it or sell it or something um but for me well i'm just happy to scrap it out because I, I don't get to scrap many of these playstations out um these older ones i prefer to keep them and but obviously this one isn't going to be any good for for parts or anything like that That's okay. Yeah, so I, I've loaded up the van of all the dirty steel sitting in the driveway. And then I've, I've just been going along, scrapping out odd PCs, trying to fill up the van. And... Uh, Like this next trip to the scrapyard is going to be a, a real good one. It's uh, going to clear off a lot of material off my property. Now, I, because I don't do these, not really sure how to get this uh, motherboard out. Um, just trying to see what what's holding it in it's probably these heat sinks I don't know ah uh, yeah ah oh, yeah it was almost invisible I didn't see this plastic. Now I can see what's going on. <laughs> Tiny screws. So we've actually been pretty lucky, even though we've had little bits of rain, just uh, just showers. It's actually um, quite warm considering we're in winter um, yeah it's it's been really good it's like 17 18 degrees Fahrenheit uh, Celsius so get this bit of brass out I like my brass all adds up. Speaking of brass, soon I'm going to have to do a uh, scrap metal run and get rid of some brass. Here's some nice extruded aluminium. Beautiful. And clean steel. All right, well, that was reasonably easy. Thanks to the people that smashed it up. <laughs> We've got our main board. It's, uh, you know, uh, well, gold recovery wise. This side's, you know, okay. But this side's pretty awesome. Two uh, nice gold corner BGAs. Copper top BGA here. Another nice BGA there. Um, silicon BGAs there, which probably aren't that good, but um, yeah, could throw this into laptop boards, could get away with it um, because of this side, or depopulate these four main chips 
and then turn it into a mid-grade board. And that's probably what I'll do. I, I'd, I'd rather have these nice BGAs, you know. Even uh, these battery ones, a lot of times in laptops and stuff. Uh, just these battery clips are, are gold-plated. So you can just put that into your gold plating stuff as well, you know. Keep doing that enough times, and uh, yeah. So I've got some PCs, just uh, little PCs that I wanted to get out the way. Uh, because they've all got to get out the way. This is what uh, Lenovo Think Center, AMD. Because again, with, with these, I, I, I don't do them very often, so I just can't remember how they actually open up. Oh. Undo the clip. There we go. Oh, these are cute little things. Look at that cute little motherboard. <laughs> oh well. We'll take it. Not much to them, but they just hang around and like everything, and just good to uh, finally get around to them. So we've got a uh, again a copper aluminium radiator. These ones a little bit harder because you got to. Take off the little sir clip to get out these steel screws. Yeah, this one I, I usually get a Phillips screwdriver and push it up against my stomach and so I can push these out because they're pretty hard. These ones are really, really tight. So I'll do that later, clean that up. So tiny little uh Motherboard, but full size uh, CPU certainly got our bang for our buck there. Just wipe it up. Just an AMD full set of pins, tinned copper uh, base, really heavy, <laughs> almost as heavy as the motherboard. So I'm happy there. One day when I uh, go to start processing all these, because I've got quite a lot of these with the copper base, so it's going to be a matter of knocking all the copper bases off. It's going to be interesting to see how much weight I've got in copper just on these bases um, when I get around to it. So there's our little motherboard. And in this case, it's got a steel plate here. It's not really holding anything on. So these have got to come out. Right, for those that are selling me boards, uh, right, there we go, motherboard ready to sell. Bit of wire. Okay. Uh, this is all plastic, so I just this is dirty steel. A mixture. 
and same with this whole box obviously not worth taking off all the plastic the fans to try and make clean steel just uh, happy to get dirty steel for it and that way it goes straight into the van and it's out the door immediately and the DVD is just a, a new school DVD the boards are too small to worry about okay There we go. One little Lenovo Think Center scrapped out. Dirty steel. Another one for the uh, fan. So this little HP, it's got a Core 2 Core 2 Duo. clean steel oh well it's got at least it's got a couple of ram sticks in there uh, it's a bonus and yeah I'll throw the rest of this into dirty steel including the whole fan okay, this one's Torx again a copper aluminium radiator always extra bonus good for us actually when I take in um, my brass I'll be taking in a bin full of the copper aluminium radiators as well so it should be a good payout same deal here you've got to take off these legs same thing got to push this up against Sometimes if I can't be bothered and I just want to do it quickly, you know, I try and snap these off, break a bit, but yeah, I'd rather just keep all the aluminium. But, so, just a regular Pentium CPU here. Unsellable here, just scrapped CPU. Now, yeah. ah, bonus little baby hard drive, and same deal when you get hard drives like this in little cases, the steel's got to it's got to come off obviously before you sell it as a scrap hard drive. Um, There we go, 160 gigabyte Seagate. Still. Now. Not sure how to get this out. It shouldn't be too complicated. Might have to pop off the front. Um, there we go. Clean steel. So because this is going as dirty. Um, yeah. Put the cover back on. You know, that's why it's dirty pressing steel. A bit of plastic sometimes can, you know, like a microwave oven. You know, you got the glass door. Um, white goods. Well, white goods are technically even lower value. Uh,
Okay. I might have to go back. Uh, something's got to give. For the size, the tiny size of the PC, at least the whole motherboard is virtually the whole, you know, whole size of it. So, and it's pretty decent weight as well. Two bonus RAM sticks, two gigabytes. Yeah, shame. If they were four gigabytes, that'd be good, but still. And we've got a motherboard to sell. And there we go. So these are pretty laid back scraps, these little PCs, which is good. And I just got a few more, a couple more of these Lenovo Think Centers that I'll get through and uh, yeah oh, well, at least this one's got a full-size hard drive in it that's a bonus the last one didn't so. all right well I'll, I'll just uh, continue on here with this these little PCs finish them off and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, because I'm just doing pretty much the same thing over and over. Um, I'll probably. Uh, end the marathon and just come back with uh, single videos once I get into the garage and find some more interesting things to scrap um, yeah because I'm just kind of now it's just rinse and repeat rinse and repeat just doing the same things over and over um, So there's no point in making a, you know, long videos of the same thing. <laughs> Might as well just replay the previous marathon, you know. I mean, it's not going to be much different for a little while until I uh, yeah, start getting onto other things, better things. Um, there's a few interesting things in the garage. Um, like I said, I might just do a couple of scrap challenges instead. Time trial, you know, see how long it takes me to scrap out a bunch of modems just until, yeah, as I said, till I get into the garage properly and, you know, start resorting my gold recovery stuff and you know, talking about gold recovery more and, uh, you know, and just, yeah, thing, things that will be a little bit more interesting to put on video. Um, and just updates of just what's going on and, and all that. Um, pandemic seems to be sort of um, pretty much the same. Uh, they are saying we're on we're on a downtrend again. So, you know, uh, the fact that we're in stage four lockdown and everyone that is out is wearing masks and stuff. Um, apparently, you know, it might be starting to work, uh, which is going to be good because. 
Ah, geez. In a few weeks' time, if I'm still not getting work, it's going to, you know, the things are going to start getting hard for me as well. Uh, although I've got, you know, still got a lot of things to do, but not a lot of things that are going to make a great deal of money, you know. But again, as I've mentioned previously, uh, um, I'm not going to, you know, even if my income stops completely, I'm not going to go uh, to the welfare and get welfare. Don't want to go through all that. I'm just happy to um, ride it out for a few weeks. <laughs> you know, luckily uh, I get a, a... There went my battery there again. But yeah, as I was saying, luckily I, I get a little bit from YouTube to uh, uh, keep me going. And, and so, well, you know, YouTube's actually, uh, yeah, it's, it's saved my bacon um, a, a lot of times because, you know, sometimes it can do pretty okay, uh, especially when I'm street scrapping. Those videos really um, are very popular and... Uh, and so yeah, so every little bit helps. And yeah, YouTube certainly does that for me. Which has allowed me to, you know, like, not have to scrap as much to earn a, a, a living as I used to, you know, at least uh, it's allowed me to sort of like, not to stress out about things and, um, you know, if there's weeks where I don't sell anything and I don't make any money, um, you know, yeah, I, at the end of the month, I can rely on a, a little bit from YouTube coming through. And so, yeah. It uh, really has helped. Not that I ever intended to actually make any money from YouTube. Um, the mic right. Yeah, it's, uh, when I started YouTube, I didn't even know that you, you could monetize your videos. <laughs> um, it was more about showing people stuff that I couldn't explain in words. I had to show them how to, you know, so I needed a platform to post up a few videos and, you know, even though most of those videos are all gone because they were only they weren't really intended to be viewed by anyone else but the the person that I was trying to explain it to um, but yeah surprisingly things have you know moved on and just got a lot of subscribers and um, and some of those you know guys you know you guys that watch my videos you know uh, want to sort of try and help support so that you let the ads roll and all that kind of thing um, and yeah well it does help a bit you know it certainly does <laughs> um, well it's kept me off the welfare queue anyway so <laughs> all right well uh, I've got a lot of things to clean up here a lot of cable um, and uh, boards to depopulate but I've got to keep filling up the van with uh, PCs and stuff, so I'm just gonna, um, yeah, just continue on scrapping out some PCs and um, might as well just call this part of uh, the scrap marathon um, complete, and that way I can sort of start focusing on uh, just continuing on from uh, from where I am now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've got a lot of things to clean up around here. Um, let me just zoom out here. It's the only uh, thing with uh, GoPro is that when you want to zoom in or out, you've got to actually stop recording to do that. So, um, yeah, so I've got a lot of uh, boards that need to be depopulated and stuff. Got to catch up on that, but I'm really impressed. With those 50 PCs gone, it's just made a, a real uh, nice difference. Um, 
and yeah power supplies need to go to the buyer and yeah so uh yeah loaded up all the other pcs and uh yeah just you know i've been scrapping more so it's all you know it's getting there but still a lot of room to put in uh, a lot more um empty pcs so yep so i think i'm just going to continue there and just finish off the pcs actually i, I might restart here's another batch of uh uh, switches geez there are, I can't believe how many switches I've I've gotten this year um, so yeah I, I'll uh, I'll probably end this part of the marathon now and uh, it'll just uh, give me a chance to get get down and get a bit excited over the next part of the marathon because uh, uh, yeah, I'll be really impressed and with myself once I uh, Yeah, get down and yeah, if we can get into this garage um, I just want to start doing other things other than scrapping PCs um, You know, there's so much more to what I enjoy doing and uh, You know once you've scrapped out like I've scrapped out like a hundred PCs throughout this marathon and um, Yeah all right well i'm pretty exhausted actually i i'm sort of going as hard as i can every day and then sometimes unfortunately it doesn't look like things are getting done <laughs> um but yeah the next part of the video i'm going to show you that door because all this is going to be gone uh except for these switches like i said i'm going to have to do some kind of uh some kind of uh time trial challenge or something or just uh yeah do a whole video just on doing switches but we're getting there we're getting there guys even all these uh, copper stackers uh, if i can get into the garage i'll uh, be able to put them onto the vice and get the, the copper out and uh, so on and uh, yeah all this cable uh, i need to really start processing this uh, and get into this workbench because there's still boards on the bench at the back there uh, that were there for depopulation but everything just got out of hand um, and there's yeah there are a few interesting bits in there I can see a lot of IMAX so more PCs <laughs> but a lot of cable to process so I'm just going to have to do that in the next couple of days before I start the next video all right guys well hope this video was a bit of fun i'm really not sure how this one's going to turn out it might be a bit of a crappy one um but uh I tried my best keep scrapping have fun and uh yeah look out for the next video real soon and i'm hoping that you all be impressed with my um progress uh in the next video it'll be a just a g'day scrappers check this out i'm hoping that that's going to be the case all right guys Take care, and I'll catch you real soon.